Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. How long since your last confession, my son? 27 hours. It's really too often. You're not that bad. Welcome to another episode of Film Fanatics presented by St. George News. I'm film critic Bruce Bennett with metaboutmovies.org. And I'm Adam Mast with cinemast.net. Well, today, Adam, we're going to be talking about Hail Caesar. Now, this film was written and directed by a couple of filmmakers we love, Joel and Ethan Cohen. All hail the Cohen brothers. And it kind of harks back to the golden age of Hollywood, the late 50s, early 50s. And it tells a story, a day in the life of a Hollywood studio executive portrayed by Josh Brolin. And it basically tells about his day and all of the things that he has to fix. Would that it were so simple. Cut. Now, what did you think about the film? Because when I watch the trailer, I think like most people who watch the trailer, think this is going to be a screw, screwball madcap comedy. It has a little bit of that, but it's more dry than that. Very dry. Yeah. I feel like there are comic moments in mm -hmm. it, and the trailer highlights those. There's some great scenes in here that are very, very funny, but it doesn't have, it doesn't connect all of those interesting, fascinating little vignettes for me. Where did they go wrong with Hail Caesar? They didn't. I, I you think liked it. I absolutely love this okay. movie. Okay. Well, <laughs> I this, loved it. Yeah, I think it's not entertaining enough to be an homage, though it has moments of that. It's not really witty enough to be a parody, and it's not comic enough to be a comic. Well, it's not going for parody. I mean, clearly this is a satire, but one of the things I so right. enjoyed about it is even though it's taking pot shots at the movie industry, mm -hmm. it's also a, a love letter. Obviously, the Coen brothers love oh, movies. Yeah. It saved yeah. their lives. They've, they've right. made some of the greatest movies in American cinema. I think cinema, it's got 15 minutes of really funny material. There's a scene with Ralph Fiennes where he's trying to get a cowboy uh, actor to say a line to right. say, you know, would that it were so simple. Simple. W would that it was. Wait, wait, watch my mouth. Would that it was so simple. Would that it was so simple. Would that it was so simple. My dear boy, why do you say that? Why do you say twer? Well, you should right. say. But the payoff, the payoff to that gag is when we actually see the scene later on in the movie. <laughs> yes. Which is classic. But yeah. I think. And I love that. But it's a two hour long movie and it oh, only has about boy. 20 minutes of stuff. No, that's I, really I disagree funny. with you. You know what? There's a musical number with Channing Tatum that is Great. high amongst the greatest and stuff the Coen Brothers go? has ever Nowhere. made. Nowhere. I, I disagree with you. Oh, there's a lot of great stuff in this. There's a terrific moment There's highlights here. The, there's so there's great, a lot more than you're willing to give it credit for. I don't know. I think there, those people are going to go, it, you know, like I said, it, in between those, unfortunately, it's not a series of those things. These are just, you know, really elements that are But there, there's great, funny subtext in this movie. Let Asterisk. me ask you this, Adam. This feels a little bit like the Coen brothers being Wes Anderson. Would you agree with that? Well, they've always had that. It's yeah. always been there. Well, I don't and know, they, because Wes Anderson doesn't go for necessarily the outright laugh. You know, it's more interesting in the de detail and the subtext, like you said. Right. And this is maybe why I don't like it, because I think Wes Anderson is not, you know, generally, you know, Accessible, accessible for you, and, and I'm a big Wes Anderson fan. Yeah. I think this movie's got a lot of a lot greater humor than your. So you're going to recommend it? Oh, I'm I'm going beyond recommending it. Oh really? I, I mean, the year is young. Okay, well, for me to call it the best movie of the year is not saying much. <laughs> we haven't we're seen only very a, a few weeks. We're in. still in the clearance. I, let, let me let me say this: the the feel of old school Hollywood that's on display in this oh, movie is amazing. amazing. I think it's just a great movie lovers movie, straight up. I'm yeah. really surprised you didn't well, like it. Well, and maybe maybe it's one of those movies that after you're see it knowing what it is, you'll appreciate it more. It was billed as a madcap comedy. It's not that. Let's just say that. Well, I wouldn't call it madcap, but it does have a it lot of It doesn't have the pace of that. Raising Arizona or, or Brother No, or it's not zany like that, but it still has a lot of great humor. Okay. And it's, it's a little more subtle, but that's the Coen Brothers for you. And need I remind anyone, our viewers out there, that a lot of Coen Brothers movies do grow on you and take on deeper meaning with repeated viewings. And I definitely think this will be one of those movies, just like Big Lebowski was. No one liked it when it first right. opened. And, right. and it's huge now. Everyone talks about it. All right. Well, it. there you go. Another uh, episode of Film uh, Fanatics. We and disagreed. We, yeah, we finally, did. Finally, which I, is although awesome. Although I say see it when it comes out on rental or DVD I say or go, if you're a movie lover, if you really love movies and appreciate old school Hollywood specifically, I say definitely go see it. I All love right. It. Well, we disagree. Another episode of Film Fanatics. I'm Bruce Bennett with madaboutmovies.org. And I'm Adam Mast with cinemast.net. And we're Film Fanatics. Are, are you? you? Well, anyway. Wow. Yeah. I, yeah, I really, really like this movie yeah. a lot. Well, it was Fantastic. a quiet theater I was in, but uh, like I said, there were some things I really loved, loved about it. Yeah, thumbs up for me, for sure.